Good afternoon and welcome to the February 23rd, 2022 meeting of the PGCPS Board of Education Climate Change Action Plan Focus Work Group meeting. My name is Pamela Boozer Struther and I'm the District 3 Board of Education member and I serve as co-chair of this work group with parent volunteer Joseph Jakuda, representing the Climate Action Parents of Prince George's County. While the primary purpose of our meeting today is to review our final steps to finalize the Climate Change Action Plan document, we will also take some time to meet Antoine Thompson, who's the Executive Director of the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition, who will be a policy partner to PGCPS as we implement the plan in the coming years. With time that we have at the end of our agenda, we will also do a quick legislative update on the bills that could impact public schools that members of our work group are working on in Annapolis and at the county council level. We welcome all work group members, special guests and viewers of the meeting and thank you for your dedication to this climate action work. You can review past recordings and meetings at pgcps.org backslash climate. I would like to call this meeting to order and ask for a motion and second for approval of today's agenda. I would, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda for member Mr. Strother. Yes. I would like to add an item to hear from our special guest, uh, Mr. Thompson from the Greater Washington Clean Cities Coalition. Thank you. Do I have a, a second? A second. Amendment? A second. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? All right, thank you. The agenda is approved. Next, I ask for a motion and second for approval of the January 19th, 2022 meeting minutes. Uh, I move for approval favorable. of the January uh, minutes. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed or abstentions? Okay, seeing none, the minutes are approved. Thank you all so much. I would like to start the meeting by congratulating our student members, Nithin, Brianna, and Jabari on the success of the town hall event last week. All the student presenters did an outstanding job and it was a fantastic moment to see the draft recommendations up on the screen. And when our all three members uh, are with us this afternoon, I hope we could take we'll take a moment to uh, celebrate and give some give some accolades for for that hard work. Uh, but it was uh, that first round of feedback coming from students was such a critical step in this process before we fine tune this plan and turn it into a document that moves on to the board. So with, with that, I'd like to turn the agenda to uh, Joseph, who's going to lead us through um, a couple of the our housekeeping and introduction of Mr. Thompson. And as we uh, move into what, what's, what we ask of everyone as we uh, finalize this draft of the plan. So thank you, Joseph. Uh, yes, thank you, board member Boozer Strother. Uh, we did make a good amount of progress on writing up the action plan since we last met. I would say at this point, the sections on buildings, electricity, transportation, food and food waste, and uh, materials waste are um, at probably 95% complete. I, I think a few sections needed to be added to the end of the, uh, the land, the stormwater and land use section, the, the sections discussing uh, labor and equity issues and uh, about funding. And then we did add a section on sort of overarching things that didn't really fit into a subject area. Um, so that is pretty much fleshed out. The one section I think needs the most work is the education and outreach and curriculum section. Um, that needs a bit more language uh, in order to uh, get it to the same level, but um, and, you know, overall for a volunteer project, I think we've done an excellent job and I'm very happy everyone's providing their feedback. Uh, the plan is to sort of, in, I guess in parallel, send out what we have 
to our resident experts that have, we've uh, met with along the way and finished up the last few pending sections. Um, we also do need pictures, if you have pictures. And also I would like to see if we, there's one thing that I'd like is highlights of what PGCPS is doing. Um, uh, we only really have one of those in there. I mean, I could probably have written something up, but I just don't know all the details about like, you know, when the Volkswagen electric bus is going to roll out or I don't know. It, I just feel like it, it'd be better for and someone else to write it just to, to really, you know, to, to, to Charles Horn. Um, uh, and so, yeah, the plan is to roll this out in parallel between finishing up our work and then getting the, the the guest experts to weigh in and provide feedback with the idea of having it ready by March the 7th. That should give us enough time to turn it around in time for um, getting it to the, uh, the Board of Education by, I believe the date was March 18th, right? Board member Boozer Strather. Um, there would also be one short meeting of the work group in between then to vote on it. Um, that is a good question. Uh, I think I uh, just place the picture, any pictures. Why don't you just email me pictures for now and I will figure out how best to store them. Um, because yeah, I don't, I feel like if we're putting them in the document, it might make the document really hard to load. Um, so yeah, send me pictures, just email them to me and I will save them in a fashion that makes sense so that people can find them when it comes time to uh, um, beautify the document. I think I got all the, the points. Uh, any questions? Uh, board member Boozer Strother. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for all the, you know, your contributions to the writing. I know you've done the bulk of it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and let you know how much I appreciate that. Um, I did, I did want to note that David Smith and I did discuss today that tomorrow or Friday, we're going to have a meeting where we, where we uh, formalize this process of photos, images, graphics, pull quotes. We'll, we could get that in order for you. And as, as you collect anything, Joseph, or any, anyone else collects things, then move them to David and we'll, we'll get them in. Uh, we're going to go through the document and make notations of where we, you know, this first round of notations of where, it's, where we know we want images that match uh, the topic. Um, where we're going to put in if we get final permission for the student art contest and of course graphics that explain certain uh, data about the school system that we've been collecting. So I just wanted to provide that kind of late breaking update. Thank you. Any other questions from the group or comments? Okay, well, thank you. And we should also send out an email in the next day or so just with, you know, a fresh link so you have it handy and, uh, and maybe some specific areas where we want folks to fill in something. Um, I, I guess, uh, sh shall we move on or are there any other, I don't have any other updates. No, nope, thanks. Okay, and it also looks like so this is the first time I've done the meeting like at a coffee shop or something because of circumstances and it looks like I'm getting kicked out. So I will be moving momentarily. But before I, as I'm in transition, I wanted to uh, um, introduce our, our, our guest. Uh, um, uh, Antoine Thompson, he, he is currently the executive director of the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition. He's uh, from Buffalo, New York, and graduated from Buffalo Public Schools. He has a dual bachelor's degree in history and African and African American studies from SUNY Brockport. 
also studied at the University of Ghana and has an honorary doctorate of law from oh, uh, Medei College. Sorry, I, I said that wrong. Um, and uh, he is a nationally recognized leader for environmental justice, screening businesses and housing diversity and urban policy. And most importantly, he's also a resident of Upper Marlboro. So um, let's uh, hand it over to Mr. Thompson, who will talk a little bit about Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition and how we can collaborate. And I think we just met, we met at a, a COG meeting. I don't know if you remember, we meant, I mentioned the fact that I used to go to Birchfield. The first That's right. <laughs> That's right. That is right. <laughs> that is right. I used to be on the city council in Buffalo and a more member of the state Senate, but you did say that. In fact, I had a birthday party there a couple of times, but that's not <laughs> it. I know that the new owners of that place now called the Oak Room, but the former, the guy who actually owns the building, Dave Furness is a longtime friend of mine um, who owns the building. Uh, but yes, yeah, thank you. In, I used did to you really? Huh? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, so I, um, I'm excited. Uh, I want to thank the team for um, asking me to be here, Pamela. Good to see you again and all the hard work that you're doing. Uh, I am just so excited to be uh, part of the process. Uh, when I was uh, in the state Senate in New York, I carried the clim uh, climate, um, climate change bill for four years. And um, and uh, they finally got it passed, I think, a couple of years ago. But I carried that bill for four years, and uh, a, no a number of a number of bills around climate justice. Okay, so, fracking, first moratorium in, in the countries, and fracking started in, in New York, and I played a small role in that. Um, but there's a, a lot of good work I see in this role. I've been with the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition since November first. And our focus really is trying to re reduce our independence on not only on foreign oil, but making sure that we leave uh, our communities and our country in a way where uh, the environment, the health is better for our, our community than when we, when we found it. And so we do a lot on alternative fuels. Uh, we've been around since uh, the 1990s. And there are there are 90 plus sister organizations like our office, um, which in our territory is Metro uh, DC. So we have all the major counties that border DC, and uh, of course the District of Columbia. And so we have a number of, of big initiatives that we are pushing now. And I think these are some things that where we can be helpful with many of the stakeholders, but particularly this climate action uh, uh, strategy, which I'm just so excited about. Uh, one is um, there is a charging, you know, the there, there's so much going on right now around electric vehicles and I'm on calls all day, every day around electric vehicles. I've learned more in the last three months and I've been involved with electric vehicle stuff for years than I've done in my lifetime because of the bi bipartisan infrastructure law and everyone wants some of that money. So we got to one, make sure there, there's, um, there's going to be a ton of money coming down uh, for Maryland uh, from that uh, law. And uh, we've got to make sure it's over $60 million is coming to Maryland. And we've got to make sure that Prince George's County gets his fair share of the EV access, because right now we got a study we're releasing in May. And there's already disparities in terms of electric vehicle access within the county. Uh, real disparities where people, you know, I live in Upper Marlboro. I think there's like three in my neighborhood, 20772. I'm in uh, Derek uh, Davis's uh, district. And so there's already disparities. If we're not intentional, those disparities will only get worse. And so we're, we have access to providing over 200 uh, public charging stations. This is outside of the money that the state is going to get um, from the bipartisan infrastructure law. So we would love to work with this group to make sure that uh, communities all over the county have equitable access to that. 
and that we make sure that uh, minority and women-owned businesses get access to those opportunities as well. We don't just want to be the consumers of those. We need people to be consumers. We also want to make sure they're installing them, they're getting trained to install them, and that there, there are business opportunities for folks as well. So we're pushing that. The other thing is around school bus electrification. We know that the, you know you all are moving that way. We like to see accelerated. We like to see um, uh, even you know 100% conversion, or at least um, if you can't buy new ones, start converting them. You can convert some of those vehicles. I think for around fifteen and twenty thousand, we know it costs you three hundred thousand to buy a new one, but that's something that you might want to think about as well as a short-term gap. You can convert uh, those faster by doing retrofitting. And in fact, I was just on a clean school bus call earlier today, and you know, ninety-five percent of the kids in America ride on diesel buses, and so it's going to take a lot to change that. You can close that gap faster by our retrofitting those buses. So uh, council member, that might be something between the district and the county council and the state as we come up with some retrofitting money that we can convert those faster, right? Until you can afford to maybe have a two-step strategy, buy some new buses, but convert those and you can convert them faster. So Pam, I wanted to push that idea. The other thing is that we do a lot around um, other forms of alternative fuel, uh, we have a DARA grant, which deals with um, trying to remove, remove uh, you know, diesel emitting vehicles for public uh, fleets. Uh, there's, there's money that's come out of, of the feds every year, what they call a CMAC, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Grant. And so you, the county, we can work with the county to apply for some grants like that. You know, we, we do a lot with the district. We're helping them convert over a hundred vehicles right now um, from pure diesel to biodiesel. And it reduces emissions and CO2 by 85%, right? So it's expensive for them to be able to buy new vehicles, but at least we can help them retrofit. That's another thing that we could work on with, with this committee is come up with a plan, not only uh, long-term, but what can we do over the next 36 months to convert some of these vehicles. And there's a, a company that's already in this region that's helping reduce um, carbon emissions from public fleets. So that's another thing that we'd love to do with, the, with, the, with this group. The last two things I just wanna uh, emphasize that, uh, that, we are, uh, that we're doing and a couple of things we're working on. One is on, on the issue of, of making sure that we look at other forms of, of um, uh, alternative fuels. One, one of them is, you know, there, there's going to be a, uh, a, an expansion of what they call uh, alternative fuel corridors. And so that's where a lot of the money is going to be flowing uh, for EV charging. So mu much of the money, uh, probably two thirds of the money out of the bipartisan infrastructure bill is $5 billion that's for charging. Much of that money is going to go along what they call corridors. You know, when you get off uh, I-95 or 295 and there's, there's gas stations there, right? Fuel currently, fuel stations. Uh, so they, th that's where a lot of those dollars are going to go. And so we've got to make sure that there's EV corridors, uh, alternative fuel corridors, because there'll be propane, there'll be hydrogen cor uh, facilities, and there, of course, there'll be electric facilities. We've got to we've got to make sure that some of those are coming through the county, right? Because otherwise, you're gonna that desert's gonna get worse, right? If you know, so we've got to we've got to deal with that issue as well. And then the the last thing I would I would say is about um, environmental justice. You know, I live right near Andrews Air Force Base. And one of the letters I'm working on, and if hopefully you all will say you all want to sign this letter, is, uh, you know, over my house flies, F flies over my house every day, all day, our planes from the military base. Now, that's not their fault. I, I signed the paperwork when I bought my house that said that uh, I knew I was moving near airport. 
but I didn't know it was how serious it was and how much it was going to rattle my house. And, and being an environmental guy, it just drives me crazy. And my mom came to visit the first time. She said, why would you buy a house next to an airport? And uh, she almost gave me a spanking, but I'm a little too old to give me a spank. But the point I'm getting at is that I like to see that air base use renewable biofuels, right? I think we need to do that and we need to make sure that they're using other forms of alternative fuels. So at the very least, if it's gonna fly over my house, I wanna make sure that at least I cut that bad toxic air down 95%. <laughs> so, so that's something I would love for you to do. So environmental justice is really important. Um, we have to educate people about it. Um, we have to organize people around those issues. And so we're kicking off a listening tour in March. We're gonna do six stops uh, for our listening tour because we're rolling out a, a, a equity framework for environmental justice in, in May. But we're doing six stops. Two will be in the district. One will be in Prince George's County. Another will be in uh, Montgomery. The other will be in Frederick. And then the last one will be in Northern Virginia. We'd love to collaborate with you all on hosting one uh, somewhere in the county so we can get a nice cross section of the public. And, and because our office is in the district, uh, you know, we do a lot with the federal DOT, federal EPA, federal DOE, Department of Energy. Because we're here, it gives us a great opportunity to impact resources and policy. So that's one of the reasons why I wanna work closer with you all because we can affect change. They're always asking us, what do people think? And that's why we're doing this listening tour so we can go and then report back what the people say and what the people want. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, I guess if there's any questions from the group, if you could raise your hand. Uh, board member Boozer Strother. Yeah, I see De Denny's hand went up before me, so I'll defer to her. Yeah. Council member Tavares. Okay. Um, Mr. Thompson, did, have you spoken with Andrews Air Force Base or have you attended the, the, the way to, to meet them at a more relaxed setting so you could start that conversation or even try to start the conversation um, would be at the Prince George's County Business Roundtable. They are an integral partner at that table. And that would be a very good way for you to have a good meal, sit right <laughs> up close to them and just whisper in their ear what you wanna do and start the conversation very nonchalantly and, and speak with the current president to see if there's a way that you can present your agenda before this influential body, business body in the county. That's the Prince That's George's Round Table? The Prince George's County Business Round Table. Yes, it's one of the most influential influential business bodies in the county. I would I would love to do that. Um, I will um, look on their website, but if you happen to have a good contact, uh, that would be great as well. Uh, or if you can help um, me get on the agenda, that would be great too. Okay, I mean, we could talk to Gary Michaels or you know one of the big heavy dogs there and and see how we could get you on. Um, the the other on the electrical vehicle stations, I agree with you that there is an incredible disparity. I want to create a program that helps to address that. And I'm trying to work on passing legislation uh, on working on that as well, at the both at the county and um, county and, and higher. Um, and finally, I, and I think we could work on a lot of these things together. 
the as far as having one of the meetings be in Prince George's, um, I I I don't know why. I think that the Prince George's County meeting maybe could be coincided with the release of the climate action plan or could be, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I would, I would love to host you and hold a meeting such as that, but I think it needs to be something bigger that's countywide, either uh, in, relation, in relation to the Sierra Club or in relation to the Climate Action Plan, the release of the countywide action plan so that we could bring a bigger audience countywide. So for you to communicate with. So that's just my gut reaction on that. And maybe have you come before the council to also speak. That could also be, and for that you would need to communicate with the clerk of the court, the clerk of the council, Donna Brown, to, to set up a briefing. I love it. I love all those ideas. I think that's great. So that we can have the buy-in on the schools, especially you want to get ahead of the curve on the budget. The budget is going to be finalized, I believe, March 15th and handed down. So you might want to get ahead of the curve before the county, county executive's budget is handed down and submitted to the council. When is she submitted to the council, do you know? March 15th, by law. I will get on that pronto. Uh, council member, I was gonna suggest one thing that, that you mentioned that I think that we, we all should consider. We had, um, we were at the, at the DC, Washington DC regional auto show a couple of weeks ago. And we, we had, we were there at our booth for probably six of the, or seven of the 11 days. One thing that we know is over 95% of the people don't have EVs, that's gonna, that number is gonna change fast. And there is a need for education and outreach. And so one of the things that would be nice is that, um, and I wanna see what you all thought, that maybe we get the um, county, the county exec and possibly the county council to um, allocate some money for education and outreach uh, on that. You know, there's a lot of festivals that go on during the summertime. So, so yes. So um, I don't want to get ahead of the curve, but I'm trying to pass legislation to provide electrical charging stations or incentivize electrical charging stations at every home, um, at multifamily buildings, um, in and dedicated uh, electrical charging stations near transit, um, near TODs wow. and in the communities. And if it is a parking, it's kind of, it's gonna be kind of like a zip, a zip car parking station where you can't park where a zip car parks, if you know what I mean. And so those are reserved parking spots. That's nice. So that's my vision. And that's my vision within the Northern Gateway and to bring it out. And I want to put in a Green Bank legislation to enact that. And I'm moving forward to putting in a business green, green building standards um, legislation that I'm modeling it after um, Montgomery County. And that would also help to incentivize buildings to retroactively speed up their, their retroactive a retrofitting of, of uh, multifamily buildings and single family homes um, with greater, greener features. And um, so those are some of the things that I'm working on in addition to a performance-based rate rating system um, to be able to create cost savings in a home that provides solar panels. So I'm working on, I mean, I just worked on five 
pieces of legislation earlier today with with the nature with that type of um, flavor. That's incredible. I'm impressed. Yeah, I think the biggest one that's going to be a little bit harder to bite is asking the county not to invest on any banks or institutions or deposit our money in any institution that works on um, fossil fuel expansion. So we're, we're being, I'm going to be very aggressive um, in my last year of office. Oh, that, that is great news. Um, shall we move on to uh, the rest of the questions? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead okay. and jump in. I um, uh, well, the conversation that the two, you know, the two of you are having, connecting where county council is heading and how it's going to impact individual homeowners, auto buyers, you know, who are part of the families of PGCPS students and how that, that intersection of education and advocacy can help drive some of the agenda for student activism. So it's gonna be really important that we keep in touch and like under, understand those initiatives and, and uh, be working together. So that's very exciting. Uh, and of course, the opportunity for students to, to come and advocate in front of elected officials uh, I think you know what we seen saw in the see in the chat is the question on my mind as well is could could the could you you help PDCPS um, more quickly install the charging stations for the teacher and community use you know but I mean obviously with we you know two hundred and two hundred and five like active you know, school buildings, but of course we have up to 255 lots, um, most of them with buildings where employees report. We, we're in the community. I mean, PG, except when you get sort of really into the Southern part of the county, there, there are community members who could walk to their elementary, middle, high school in these dense areas where we need to work on the emissions for, for, for healthy children. So, um, you know, we're, we're moving quickly on this plan and we want to make sure we're ready for the funding. So what is your advice around this, per, you know, charging stations? Like here's an op we, opportunity for charging stations. We may not, not have been ready to move on next month, but we're going to miss it if we don't. Like we're trying to figure, we're trying to figure out that puzzle to raise our hand and say we're ready. Yeah, so the communities that are ready will get the resources faster, right? So Pam, we have Pam, we have um, we have uh, vendors that we can connect with you if you have sites. The easiest thing is to send me an email of saying these are some potential sites. We'll send them to the team, and they can start working on those sites, right? Because I think you're right on. I mean, community centers public parks, um, vacant lots that the, may be owned by the county that are, that are in good locations. Uh, I think as the council member was talking about um, rail stations that um, make perfect sense, right? Uh, so if you all are saying, hey, we wanna start getting some of these up, uh, I can go back to our team and say, hey, Prince George's County has, they have, they got 30 sites that they own and we just got to work with our vendors to get them up and we can look at setting some goals to get it going. And that will accelerate the drive because people are, the, all the data shows that um, people are, are highly interested and they're only going to continue to get more interested in electric vehicles, right? And so once you can bridge that gap of what they call range anxiety, that for those, I'm sure this group knows that, um, that helps them accelerate buying an electric vehicle, whether it's new or used. So the more we can get those sites up, uh, particularly community sites, people will then um, uh, feel comfortable 
traveling around and knowing, hey, they're more readily available in my community. Yeah, thank you so much. And I just want to extend my thanks to you for being here. I know there's more questions and I, you know, really enjoyed our first meeting and I'm very excited that we're moving along this partnership now because it sounds like you're really going to be able to help. We'll, we'll transition to an ongoing advisory group for the plan implementation. And already these conversations just help us really understand, you know, how, what, what we need to move on and, you know, work with um, CEO, Dr. Goldson and the, the team and um, particularly in this case, the, the transportation team. So, so thank you. So Joseph, I know others, I saw some other hands pop up and pop down. So. I, I think uh, Jamie was the other person who had their hand up, uh, but I'm going to ask my questions real quick. Like, and also want to say that when you mentioned that uh, the communities that, you know, are ready to go, will get the funding. I think that that's one of the main things we're trying to do with this PDCPS climate action plan is show that the school system is ready to go so that the school system can get the funding for all these kinds of projects. Um, but the two questions I had, one was, uh, you had mentioned the 100 biodiesel vehicles. I was, I want if you could elaborate on what type of vehicles those were. And the other question I had was, I remember a little while ago, there was a program, I think it was called MEET, um, where our school systems could uh, have an electric um, bus pro uh, pilot program and you get a charger out of it. I was just wondering if you could talk a couple seconds about that and if it's still available. Yes, yes. So great, great questions. This, this is a sharp group of people here. So <laughs> the first thing is, uh, Yes, we, we can, not only can we get you a, a charger, but we can get the district a school bus. Uh, we can get a, a school bus where you get it for a few days, sometime a week. If that's something that you all would like, I know that um, at least I believe you all are, are either order or, or are ordering a couple of buses, but we can work with a vendor to get a bus on loan to you all. We do have a electric school bus that we're, that's coming to the region in March. I will get the details of that. And Pam, if you want us to coordinate that for it to come to Prince George's County, we can make that happen, okay? Joe or Pam, if that's something you would like. Because I know it's coming to DC, but you know, I wanna make sure that it hits a couple of regional places. So if, if that's something you're interested, we can do that. Um, the You had another question before that, um, Joe. What was the other question you had before that? Uh, the other question is, what type, what, what type of vehicles were the biodiesel ones? Oh, yeah. biodiesel, yes. So a lot of those are um, more heavy equipment, you know, dump trucks, all anything that's on diesel, that's a, a, a snow plows, uh, you name it. Uh, so this uh, pro program right now is... Um, with the Buffalo, with Buffalo, <laughs> with the DC uh, water and sewer. And so they're doing a uh, hundred vehicles and, they, it's, and so they have to put some money up, but it's reimbursed largely with federal, uh, there's some cost share with the feds, but it's a multi-million dollar grant. And in fact, um, I think we're working on another grant as we speak. So if that's something that either the school district with its vehicles, or the uh, county with its fleet, uh, we would love to, I can definitely let our folks know that you all are interested and we have to work with the school district on that. But the school district has a lot of vehicles itself. One of your, uh, uh, one of our board members is the fleet manager for, for um, the county, uh, Rick Hilmer, Richard Hilmer. And, uh, but that's separate from what the district does. And we could definitely, if the district wants it, I will talk to our team. I think that would be excellent to, to if that's something you're interested in and cutting that. You got a lot, I'm sure, you know, you got a lot of diesel vehicles in the school district, I'm sure too. Thank you. Um, and I guess, uh, Jamie, did you still have a question? Just a comment. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Really appreciate all of your uh, great work that you're doing in such a short time that you've been uh, with the coalition. It's really uh, admirable. 
Uh, I just was, when you mentioned Andrews, Joint Base Andrews, I thought about their, our, our PGCP of school that's right there, uh, just uh, right there uh, adjacent basically to the base of Francis T. Evans. And I didn't know if that would lend conversation with the persons that, you know, uh, um, Ms. Denny uh, recommended you meet with if that could lend conversations and if there would be any opportunities there for EV or just conversations on mentorship, even though that's an elementary school, you know, it feeds out to you make students have interest at such a young age. And we have a, a program that we uh, utilize, the Energizing Student Potential Program that targets our elementary and middle schools. And these students are just quite, uh, they're quite knowledgeable. Uh, they are just very articulate uh, in their knowledge uh, about, as you said, uh, uh, electric vehicles and, and the like. And as board member Boozer Struther said, you know, we have those students hopefully that will join us before the meeting. They did such an awesome job last week at the town hall. So I thought about that. And then I thought about, you know, for our ask for the EVs uh, in a meeting that I participated with uh, in with BGE, it was a couple of weeks ago, and, and they were, you know, making us aware of the decarbonization bills, you know, with the House and the Senate. Uh, what this brings to their attention is, and, and they just don't know yet, you know, what additional strain is it going to be on the electric grid? And so I hope that we can get our ask in early enough for these charging stations so we won't be denied and so there will be equity across the board because we, you know, we get to these summer months of July and August, and when the grid is strained and you have the, the potential for brownouts and blackouts, then we have no power to power the electric vehicles. So uh, I think they're still trying to work out some things and trying to figure out where we're gonna go with the House and the Senate bills in, turn of, in terms of alternative uh, options. But um, I think as many people as we can partner with and uh, raise the awareness, it's just, it's time. It's really time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would just say quickly, uh, first, uh, uh, thank you for your uh, questions and your, and your passion. Uh, number one, love uh, working with schools, all ages. We are working on a project um, that we're putting together for some time in the spring with one of uh, two of the schools in the District of Columbia. If you have a school that you want us to, whether it's a career fair, whether it's speaking, or whether it's trying to uh, have us meet with the, the principals and parents about, you know, improving the environment uh, around the school as it relates to the air base or any other issues like that, that would be great. And the same thing, if it's around trying to get a, a charging station uh, at that school. Clearly, I live in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that the county that I live in gets his fair share of resources. I look at the data all day, every day. So anything we can do to be supportive will help make that happen. Love to do something with the youth. Uh, I speak, I, you know, as, as I speak at um, to youth all the time. We are also um, we also have internship opportunities at our office as well uh, for high school and college students. We have a, uh, uh, we, I just participated last week in a virtual career fair with Bowie State University. And we'll probably wind up hiring one of their students uh, for the summer. Uh, so there are a lot of different opportunities. We also are putting together a youth academy uh, to, to um, train uh, young people throughout the region in environmental leadership and stewardship. So your, your suggestions are right on time. So let us know how we can work together um, and we'd love to be a supportive. So I love the kids. I got I got a whole office full of pictures with me read, reading the kids, giving kids money, volunteering with kids, mentoring kids. And uh, so I would love to help do the same uh, for students in the county. Awesome. Thank you kindly. We really appreciate uh, anytime. it. Anytime. Not seeing any more questions. Uh, Board Member Boozer Souther, did you want to say anything to wrap up the conversation? 
Oh, just to um, just to say thank you. I've I've uh, tracked these ideas, and I think uh, I think a few of us are that you know we really have to you know wrap wrap ourselves around our you know who our partners are and how we're coming together to to make real change quickly. And um, just want to thank you again for your time today. And I know we're going to be seeing you again in the the future. And I you know if you're able to stay. For a little longer in the meeting, we are about to move to um, acknowledging our student uh, work group members on the town hall last week. So um, I hope you can stick around for a few more minutes. Uh, Joseph, did you have any uh, final comments as well? I, I would uh, just say uh, keep up the hard work. Uh, I want to really commend uh, you as a school board member, all the stakeholders, and especially our other elected officials, our council member. You warm my heart. You know, when I was involved with these as an elected official uh, 10 years ago, running a first African-American to chair the New York State Senate Committee on Environmental Conservation, uh, people thought I was crazy. And, um, and I did green jobs, green New York, a lot of uh, toxic free baby bottles, uh, expanded the bigger, better bottle bill. You know, the water bottles are five cents in New York. Now they're going to 10 cents. I almost got shot. I did electric recycling. So, so you must know Majora Carter and all those guys, Omar Arias and all those people. Yeah. And so I am so excited to, to see all the legislation that you are pushing and, and the fact that it, it's uh, we have a race going on across the country at the local and state level for people to try to really push sustainability. So and, and I'm just glad to see such a diverse group of stakeholders really working together on these very important issues uh, that were not very popular back in the days, but they're on the front table now and you all are making it happen. So congratulations. And I'm just here to have her, her support. Thank you. We should, st we should still get a, uh, grab a cup of coffee. We but, should, uh, I'll, let's make that happen. I'll email yeah, you. So, so, yeah, let's do I'll that. I'll email you, all right. Thanks. All right. Well, I see that uh, Brianna and Nithin have joined us, and I don't. I don't know if you either. You two feel like coming off camera right now or not? That's up to you. But uh, we just wanted to. Hey, Nithin. <laughs> we just wanted to take a moment again as a work group to thank you and congratulate you on the success of last Thursday in the town hall and that uh, to have you and your peers, all the wonderful presenters bring forward for the very first time, the recommendations was, um, you know, personally for me, credible, you know, credibly proud moment. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think, you know, we would all just like to take a, a moment to uh, say some words of, of recognition of your hard work on the work group. I know we're, we're gonna be kind of wrapping up this particular you know, group of us, all of us can move to the next group to for implementation, if everyone has time. But in this context, I just I just thought it'd be nice for folks to, to acknowledge your your work on this work group. So I see Marita would like to go. I would definitely like to go because I was there. And I thought, you know, it was just exciting. It was just plain exciting to hear uh, all the work read out loud by you all. And you just did such a good job. You were just so prepared. You sounded like you really knew what you were talking about. I thought the, you know, the way you worked in the polls, everything was really engaging, you know, just so proud, really. Just magnificent. Is he Joseph's hand? So I, I was going to say, you know, listening to the presentation the other night, I, I, I mean, PG Proud, or P, PG CPS Proud is definitely how I was feeling. You know, just you all shown such leadership on, on the call and um, the, the discussion afterwards was really, really, really moving. And I, I'm glad we have such good leaders that are going to be leading the charge on this as, as we work to solve these problems. Thank you. See Jamie and Kate. 
Jabari, Nathan, and Brianna, I just want to salute you all today and let you know how very proud that not only we, but I am of you. Uh, we didn't have this opportunity when I was your age, and I just want uh, to uh, encourage you to continue to do just what you're doing now. Uh, you make me feel uh, I can breathe knowing that there are persons such as yourself who are really taking active roles. You're not just doing the talking, but you're doing the walking. And it really is incredible. Keep up the great work. You have a great uh, wealth of support here on this, this, in doing this meeting today. So please don't hesitate to continue to reach out to all of the persons that may be here and beyond here because we have your back and we thank you so much for all that you're doing. You make us proud and we're looking for greater things through you all. Yeah, I'll just add, I'm not feeling, uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so I'm not going to go on camera today, but I really just want to say that you all, it was, it was the first time we heard and um, all of the, the recommendations and the vision for PGCPS in terms of climate change action um, articulated, and it was so fun and um, just um, visionary to hear it from the students that will be impacted by it most. So thanks again for, for doing that. I know it was a lot of work and, and I loved in particular hearing your perspectives on why certain aspects were, were most important and I look forward to more things from you all. I see Donald and Valerie. Donald, do you wanna go next? Okay, yes. Um, I, I, one, congratulations. Uh, it, it was an excellent representation. Um, and I, I mentioned this afterward of, of not just uh, PGCPS students, but as community members. You, you are students, but you are valuable community members and residents of Prince George's County. And you're contributing at a school level at a systemic level throughout the county with the work that you're doing. Um, and these will have ripple effects, um, not only in that town hall meeting, but Nathan, I know you spoke to county council last week on behalf of the Prince George's County plan. I know that each one of you are also taking on um, projects at the school level that are both related uh, directly and indirectly to climate. Um, uh, Brianna, we, we have a meeting this Friday at Eleanor Roosevelt High School about composting, things that are on the front edge of really creating uh, systemic change. And you all are at, at the beginning and doing the work. And so often, right, we hear, okay, well, you know, this is how I want things to be, but what what are you actually and what groundwork is being laid to to pave the way for that and you're creating that in real time not as a future leader but as a current leader and so i certainly uh co commend you all um uh, uh jabari at fairmont heights we we have uh composting getting started as well um and so all of you both at a county and individual and school level doing so many great things that I commend you for. And we are fortunate as a committee to be able to share the space with you. And these are the things that really get us excited as educators and as members of this education committee because it's, it's what it's all about. And so we appreciate you and, and congratulate you. Thank you, Donald. Uh, Valerie, would you like to go next? Yeah, I, I think I made some comments to the students um, last week, but I just have to say, uh, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of Dr. Goldson, but I think she would agree with everything I'm about to say. And that is, you know, we hand ring a lot about the future and about this generation of young people in particular, like what are they going to bring? And I have to say that I couldn't feel more um, solid about the future uh, that we have in store because these young leaders 
uh, brought the fire. And uh, what I really enjoyed about the town hall was that CNN, uh, they should be ready for what you guys are gonna bring because your, your generation is so good at being camera ready, on point, having all your, your information intact, ready to go. I've never seen anything like it. It was fun to watch you all. And so I know our future is in good hands. I can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, as, as Pam knows, I've said this to her before, put the students in the front uh, and let them lead this effort. So I'm really proud of all of you guys. Denny, I see your, your hand up. I just wanna echo what uh, Ms. Irvin said. I, I think that, um, I'm very proud of the products of, of the students that we produce within Prince George's County Public Schools. And, and you are all an example of that. I have never had a doubt. And I really wanted to just thank uh, all of you all for taking time out of your busy schedule, starting with Pam, um, the, the board member, Wilson Struther, to put this group together and 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 have it be such a well-run, smoothly run, high-performing team um, with, with Joseph so dedicated and, and all of you all so dedicated to the cause. And, and thank you for taking up the mantle, students, you know, and, and running and taking that baton and running with it. Because at the end of the day, this is about you, right? And so just look to us as examples that you can look to, lean on, never burn a bridge and make sure that you're able to to um to keep moving forward but always look back so you could pull somebody else along with you so with that i say thank you for your efforts and keep moving forward and keep bringing others behind you thank you thank you council member uh, at any anyone else want to say something I, I did want to reflect on what valerie said about cnn watch out because i i had that same feeling of um just at the 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 comfort level that all of you have in your peers is just so different than my memory of my comfort level in high school so it was i was just so um i was just so you know moved by that and 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 it made me excited about how many how much more of this we should be doing because we could, you know, it can be done. And so I was super excited about the, you know, the idea of doing, doing more of these forms. So um, thank you, Valerie, for noting that CNN has competition. I agree. So at, any, anyone else, or of course, Jabari, Brianna, and Nathan, if you wanted to, to reflect on, on that as well. Um, yes, I'd like to go. Sorry. Um, I feel like it was a very eye-opening experience because I've done the work before, but really to see it like in real time and my motive behind it, it really came true. And I'm glad that I was able to experience it. And I'll be, from now on, I'll be working even harder to push my motivation and my words out to the rest of the world. All right, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I just wanted to say, like, I really enjoyed the town hall, and I enjoyed working with each and every one of you. And for me personally, I my friends have told me that, you know, because of me, they started to care more about the environment. So it's really great to see that, you know, I, I can share what I'm passionate about with other people and inspire the younger generation as well so it, i i truly enjoyed the town hall because i know that you know i'm making a change like i'm starting something yeah absolutely i've no doubt that you've inspired many of your your peers at, at school and and beyond in the community so thank you I know Nathan. I know you're you're on a on the bus right now, so I don't I don't know if you want to jump in or not. Maybe 
uh, give us a quick signal there or, or jump in if you can. Yeah, I don't know how it'll sound because the bus gets loud, but um, uh, I said something in the chat too, but um, I thought it, it felt really satisfying um, to see how everything worked out, but um, it left me really hopeful and also inspired like to see everyone come together and not just like at the common hall with other students, but just um, like as, as a work group itself, I've, I've really enjoyed that and seeing um, how we have so many different types of people here all working together um, towards, you know, a common goal and, you know, common goals, but multiple things. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Let's give a, let's give a round of applause and, um, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll look forward to our time together. We have some more steps, but this was, you know, I think one of our longest meetings that we'll have together that we could take some time to really truly acknowledge your contributions to this work group. And um, so I think our final agenda item, we have another 22 minutes is to um, get some legislative updates from Joseph. And if anyone else is currently working on some advocacy to to feel free to to add that. I'm I'm going to give an update from a Chispa event that I went to yesterday, but I'm going to have Joseph go first. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I'm, I uh, I'm going to go through the bills that I am aware of that touch on the uh, intersection between the environment and schools. The first one is HB 19. It is called the Safe Walk to School Act. It is sponsored by Delegate Solomon, and it would require. This came up last session. It would require um, schools, new schools in Prince George's County and other counties, uh, to uh, develop a plan to show how folks can safely walk to the school. It also, would apply some major renovations. I don't recall off the top of my head what the threshold for major re for renovation is. Um, the Second bill I'm aware of is SB 124 or HB 150, and this is a grant to uh, uh, bring composting to schools. It's a good amount of money. I think it would cover about 200 schools in the state, and we kind of talked a little bit about the last time, or no, at the student event. Um, uh, so uh, uh, the, the, the student, I'm blanking on the name, I'm sorry, from Laurel High School had testified on that one. Um, Javier. Javier, that's right. Um, next up is HB 365. This is the Green School Construction Act. It is sponsored by Delegate Corman, and this would uh, it would uh, let the uh, IAC would not be able to provide funding a, a match to any fossil fuel infrastructure except for generators. Generators aren't on there, but uh, any boilers, any water heaters anything like that. So there would be no state match for that and that type of uh, equipment if that passes. And that's HB 365. HB 696, that's uh, one uh, board member Boozer Strother was just referring to. This came, was from last session. This is the one sponsored by Delegate Fraser Hidalgo. And this is the one that would pr create a pilot program so that uh, the utilities, Pepco or BG&E, could set up a school bus program to uh, help defray the cost of the school system. Um, and in exchange, get to do the uh, use the batteries uh, when not in use for augmenting the grid. Um, and we got SB588. This is called the High Performance in Green Buildings. This is Senator Edelman. And there's also a cross file in the house. I forget who did that one and what the number was. And this would essentially, there's a, I guess a disconnect between whether or not schools have to meet high performing building standards in this, the way the language is written and would try and clarify that. So it's a, that's a minor technical bill. Um, there's also SB 528, and that's a big one. That's Senator Pinsky's Climate Solutions Now Act. It would require every year one new school to be net zero. Um, it would also have a net zero loan, uh, loan fund or grant fund. Sorry, blanking off its loan or grant. But definitely have a funding mechanism to help defray the extra cost from net zero schools. It also would set uh, a 
what's called a building energy performance standards for all types of buildings, including schools. So this would mean that essentially over time, energy use for buildings would need to go down. And then it also would set a phase out date for being able to purchase new uh, diesel buses. Um, I believe the date was 2024. Um, where is next? Then there is SB, oh, sorry, HB 831 and HB 806. These are the equivalents in the House of the Climate Solutions Now Act. There's a bunch of different bills that are essentially climate solutions in the House. The, what, the one difference is they don't have the requirements for the schools that the Senate version has. So that's HB 831 for existing buildings and HB 806 for new buildings. And there's also HB 1290, which is the school salt. It, it will provide an additional 5% match dollars from the uh, IAC for net zero schools. They also provide an additional 10% match dollars for schools in, I guess, sort of ultra low income uh, communities, and then an additional 5% match dollars for uh, schools in a, a lower income community, but not the lowest income community. Um, I don't recall what the thresholds are off the top of my head. And then finally, there's HB 686, which is by Delegate Solomon, and it would require carbon dioxide carbon dioxide monitoring in schools and also have some requirements with MERV filters. I think that is what I am aware of. Oh, wait, there's one other one, sorry. Um, I think it's SB 588. This would require all new school buildings to have the three uh, bins for recycling, landfill trash and composting as when they're built. That is your rundown of the legislation that I am aware of. Yeah, thank you so Any much. Joe. Yeah, it's great to great to get that rundown again. And I know um, I in my role on the board, I had pre previously served on the policy and governance committee and then represented, you know, legislatively and tracked the Annapolis bills. I have not been as close to that, but I'm re presuming everything goes as planned. I'm returning to that committee starting next Tuesday, and I very much look forward to jumping right into making sure that where we can make recommendations to the full board in a timely manner, because I know things are moving, um, that we could have our, our voice in this. So um, I'm definitely you know, planning to help move that. And uh, Valerie uh, is, helps the committee with that as well, and obviously as well informed of the climate action bills as well. So. Um, I hope to do more of that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I wanted to give a shout out to our work group colleague, uh, Ramon Valencia Calvo. Yesterday, he and his uh, leadership of CHISPA Maryland hosted a rally in Annapolis with many PGCPS families. And a lot of his, his organizing work comes out, it happens to come out of my district and council member Tavares's district from Langley Park, families from Rosa Parks Elementary and Langley Park in Cool Spring um, came out uh, to uh, focus in on the electric school bus rebate program bill. And uh, we had the sponsors of that bill speak and uh, had a, a fun surprise that Elizabeth from our uh, labor partners for sustainability was also a speaker, so we got to connect uh, that she is an expert to this work group as well and, and get to, to you know, show off our efforts of this climate change action plan. So shout out to Ramon for the success of that. And I learned that you could actually go into buildings and visit offices again. I had no idea that they had opened those up. So we were able to go, we were the only, advocates in the building. I don't think it's well known yet, but we were able to take families and students to do uh, lit drops and do advocacy. And I just think that's such an important, you know, incredible experience to have that comfort level of going to a legislator's office at, at, in elementary, middle, and high school. Because again, I think some of us, you know, when we were younger, that just children, <laughs> students and children were just not 
welcomed into that environment. So I'm just really glad that we're changing the culture of that. So, um, so those are some, some comments I wanted to add. Um, and anyone working on anything in Annapolis that you wanted to comment on? I don't, I don't, I know we don't have our primary ex, you know, advocacy representatives here today. And maybe Valerie, if you have a comment from the policy and governance committee side. Yeah, you might not have received it yet, uh, board member Boozer Strother, but an, um, a um, tracking sheet went out to all board members, maybe like an hour and a half ago, that has um, all of the 180 or so bills we're tracking uh, divided into high, medium, and low. And I did see an email from you regarding House Bill 696, which is the Public Utilities Electric School Bus Pilot Program. Uh, uh, David uh, Frazier Hidalgo's bill and that bill is moving through and we have that prioritized as high. So um, it had its first reading January 31st and for whatever reason, the hearing on February 21st was canceled. So we're waiting for that to be rescheduled, but we're following a lot of the bills that like all the bills that um, we just heard Joseph Jakuta uh, comment on and several more than that. So if you look at all the education related bills as they uh, pertain to the environment, there are many <laughs> this year. So there, there are a lot that we're following. That's great. Thank you for that update. And that will be, we can, that goes beyond the board. Is that, can that, can board members share that right now? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, so I'll you be should have it. it. I'll be sharing yeah. it with everyone. Okay. Yeah, you should have it in an email and it's also gone up on board docs. Okay, great. Thank you so much for the update. I see, uh, Denny, if you could give us some updates from the council side as well. Okay. Well, I was gonna do first Annapolis and then, well, not even Annapolis, this is small. Well, Annapolis in the sense of what we are uh, tracking in terms of SIPSI from COG. And so we are, we're, we're tracking HB 100 and which is Sustainable Maryland Program Fund. Um, and that's su to support Maryland communities to realize uh, environmental economics, uh, uh, social sustainability programming, uh, and, that, and to provide like about $750,000 to that towards that fund. We have HB 31, which is a charter Curia's uh, bill, uh, which is the Maryland Energy Administration and is a resilient hub grant program fund establishing a program for, through the Maryland Energy Administration and creating the standards for that program. Um, uh, I don't know if it's, if there, if there, I'm assuming that there's going to be a certain amount of funding associated with the grant program through electrical vehicle charging stations. I don't know if you've already mentioned. We have the HB 894. I don't know. This was by the request of the Department of Transportation, Electrification, and Modernization Team Act. So altering electrical vehicle charging equipment rebate program by the extending by extending the duration of the program and increasing the total amount of the rebates issued under the program and repealing the authority of the issued rebates to retail service stations and limiting the issues issuance <laughs> of the rebate to one recharging system per individual per address. Um, and I think it's ex also expanding to medium and heavy duty zero emission vehicles. Um, it, we're also doing HB 8229, requiring the department to adopt, um, the Department of Environment to adopt regulations on or before December 1st, um, establishing the requirements for the sale of new zero emission medium and heavy duty vehicles in the state. Um, and HB 8, okay, this is, I think they made a mistake. And I think it's also, so it's on the Senate side, I think they split it into two. Um, in, the, in the House side, they combined it into two. So on, on one side, in the Senate side, they are just setting up the regulations and 
the second bill on the Senate side, HSB 948, establishes the electric school bus pilot program requiring the Public Service Commission to implement and administer a pilot program authorizing investor owned electric companies to apply to the commission to implement an electrical electric school bus pilot program with a participating school system. If the pilot program meets certain standards and authorizing investor owned electric companies to recover certain costs from the pilot program. And that, if that one is set by Young, the, the first one, and the, the second one is, is by um, Senator uh, Kramer. The other one is Pinsky's bill. I think we mentioned it, Climate Solutions Now Act for 2022. We already mentioned that. Um, HB uh, 708 by BARV. This is a comprehensive, comprehensive solution. So this was, I believe, Pinsky has everything is the whole bill, Climate Solutions Act, and it compiles everything. But the, the, in the House side, they split it up into pieces. So they're piecemealing it all. And so that's um, Pinsky's bill is split up into three, into HB 708, HB 806, and HB 831 to see how it will get through. And it's just certain pieces of the bill. Um, on the solar end of things, we got Clippinger on HB 440 uh, for com community, community solar energy generating systems and uh, generating capacity. So increasing the maximum generating capacity of the community solar energy um, generating systems from two megawatts to five. And so they're looking at like, again, these are a little bit unsure. They're looking to see if it's gonna go anywhere. Bills to track, which is um, H HB 1083, County and Municipal Street Lighting Investment Act. Um, I think that's self-explanatory green businesses. SB 308, which again, requiring the Department of Energy to administer a statewide green business certification program. This is a re-entry of last year. Um, HB 1366 for renewable energy portfolio standards. And it includes a zero emission energy resource as a tier one resource, uh, renewable source eligible for meeting certain tier one obligations under the renewable energy portfolio standard. Again, this is a, um, a re-entry from last year and HB 11, I believe we talked about also um, altering the definition of a tier one renewable source. Um, and I think we have, honey, this is long list. I'm, I'm never gonna finish. I can send you all the list if you guys wanna see it. And that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cause I can't that, read all this. this. Is, that, that was great. I definitely, I've learned that. I mean, it's, you know, really, you I know, mean, this is these are the ones that we're once yeah. we approve it, once we approve it from SIPSI, we are agreeing on it from uh, Virginia, Maryland, and DC, uh, Virginia, Maryland, and DC. And I'm on the legislative committee on the on the Maryland side. And so we prepare letters. Uh, and then if it's strong enough, I put it forth in the council so we can also get the council to also co-sign on that bill as well. So we have the council's approval and we have uh, um, the, 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 the regional approval. Uh, and on my end of things is what I mentioned to you. I'm doing a green building for performance based if I can get it done at the county level. I'm doing um, electric, electrical vehicle charging um, to create lighting at, at parking lots. If I could do parking, that means that would be in a zoning zoning change law to allow parking stations or uh, parking to, to exist. And I'm actually doing uh, something a little bit different that I'm trying to create a, um, I know that commercial vehicles are entities non grata in communities. So I'm trying to create a pilot program 
the same way we use Airbnb um, to rent a hotel room, same way I want to do with parking stations. So I want to create a parking stations through air, uh, through an Airbnb Airbnb model, so that I can um, park commercial vehicles and and uh, electric and electrical vehicles and creating electrical vehicle charging stations that are conglomerated uh, through um, commercial parking, emptied commercial parking um, lots inside and around the community like the Purple Line. That's a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Denny. <laughs> Thank you for all your work. And I, I was just going to know, you know, just some years ago, we just, you know, just the, the shift in legislative focus. I mean, five years ago, I'm sure we could barely, I mean, Joseph could give much more context than me, but I don't even think five years ago, we were talking about this kind of legislation, this quantity and focus and solving the problems that you know, those of us on the ground are asking to be solved and be be part of. So it's really, really a big shift. Um, I see we just have a couple more minutes left. I did see a question from Jamie on the House bills on decarbonization, um, Senate Bill 528, House Bill 708 and 831. Does anyone have a particular knowledge what's happening with those bills? Say, uh, I'm sorry, say that again. And if you could see the chat, Jamie's asking about the bills on decarbonization. So those are Senate Bill 528, House Bill 708, and 831. Are those, are you tracking those? That's what I'm trying to look up. Um, let me let me write them down and have them be considered by, by SIPSI. But if they are not writing them, more likely than not, they're not viable, but I'll, I'm, I'm meeting with them this week and I'll send an email to them to say, hey, can you look into this? Can you, I'm sorry, can you tell us again what SIPSI stands the for? Clim the climate, ener climate uh, energy environment um, planning commission. Okay, thank you. All right, um, Joseph, do you have any wrap up on this? I don't know if you're you're still able to be with us on video. Uh, no, I uh, my laptop died, so I'm just on my phone now. Oh um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah. Um, no, I, I think I, I I don't think I have anything additional. If you want to just wrap up the meeting, um, yeah, you can take it over. All right. Well, again, Joseph, thank you for kicking us off for that update. Obviously, you know, there's, uh, you know, individual action group advocacy um, of the bills that you care most about. So, you know, definitely you could tap in to our network of advocacy organizations that has that uh, coordinated like Maryland League of Conservation Voters and CHISPA partnership Sierra Club Maryland, Prince George's um, uh, Union of Con Concerned Scientists is very involved. So you could look to them for, for kind of getting your, your individual advocacy going. Um, can I, I'm sorry, can ahead. I just do like a name drop real quick? If anybody has access to the New York Times Magazine, um, my friend Ramon Cruz, who's the president of the Sierra Club nationwide, he was just on the front page of the I went to school with him. So just oh wonderful. Just 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 dropping the mic on there. Yeah, you, yeah. If you don't want to read that. that. If you don't want to read the article. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> All right. So it is now 501. So we're going to uh, do a motion to adjourn this meeting. Um, but as Joseph mentioned, we are going to look at the calendar and give you as much notice as possible for what will be the meeting to vote on the, the text of the plan that will move to the, uh, the designer. Um, 
I think that's a Joseph. That's oh, what that's nice. we agreed to uh, that we would vote before it goes to the designer. I, I'm sorry, I'm checking in with Joseph to make sure I'm not stating this. That, 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 I, yeah, I think that was the plan. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that means I think it's like 10 to 14 days, but we'll do our best to. Well, obviously, we want as high as participation as possible. So we'll, David has, will, of course, help us with that. Has it been edited already? Oh, okay. So we'll circle back on that. And Denny, I could catch you up. We are at fine editing, and this is your chance as a work group member to go in to uh, turn on that editing function or just use comments. If you just want to say, hey, I have a concern here. This is my recommendation. Joseph, Kate, and I will review, make those changes. It's, you know, however you want to approach it, but either as an editor or just as a com commenter at this stage. Um, okay, so just, just send, send it to me if I haven't already, because I thought I I thought we had it, but I thought I had it, but. Yeah, um, I'll make sure, we'll send you the, the link yeah, again. Yeah, the editor, editor one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, be, and before I close out, I just want to acknowledge, I was, I'm so pleased to see that board member Sonia Williams, our vice chair of the board, joined us today, um, you know, who uh, I think I mentioned to, to many of you way back in the beginning that uh, board member Williams has been, was such a, inspiration and a peer who uh, taught me about buildings and infrastructure and maintenance and looking at a budget and understanding that we just can't go on like this. So we have got to, to transition to clean energy schools and infrastructure. And uh, Sonia, I'm just, uh, just wanna thank you so much for coming. I know being vice chair has uh, been, made it difficult for you to be here often as you would like, but I know that you've been paying attention and that means a lot to all of us. Um, Absolutely. I just, again, want to um, congratulate you on this effort uh, to, to take on such a large topic, um, an important topic, uh, and your, your commitment to this, it shows. I was just visiting the website and thank you with the help of David Smith on putting together that web page on our school board um, website. It looks beautiful. Um, there is so much information on there already that the CEO places. And so to have this information about the climate action plan um, coming out of the uh, work group, is just incredible. So I appreciate that. Um, I always send constituents to the website because all of the accurate information is there about what we do in PGCPS. And so this edition is just amazing. So when I look at um, the way focus work groups should look and work, I look at yours and you know that I say it all the time, you've done a phenomenal job. And thank you, David, for your support because I know she could not do this without your help. And you're right, I would love to be on here more often because you're talking my language. And it, I mean, it really makes me feel good to see this happening. So under your leadership, we will accomplish this and we will do some amazing things and lead, if not the region, the nation on, on this. So thank you very much, uh, Board Member Booza Strother. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair Williams. All right, so, um, I guess we will now move to adjourn this meeting. Anyone want to make that motion? I do. I move to adjourn the meeting. All right. Thanks, Marita. Do I have a second? Second. All right. So all, all in favor? All right. Anyone, oppo anyone uh, opposed and want to hang out? All right. <laughs> Uh, um, Pam, just remember that that Alvi now works for the Aspen Institute, so we should probably connect on that because you have a report from the Aspen Institute. Absolutely, yeah, great, great addition. Thank you. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much, and we will all see each other in ten to fourteen days for the the vote on the plane. Oh, I see David Hill's hand is going up. David, I'm not going to close this out until you have a chance to to go. Um, no, I am good to go. I just wanted to thank everyone. I have, I don't say a lot, but I sit back and I hear a lot going on and we are definitely moving in the right direction. You know, I have 1400 school buses and I think about you every single day. So, <laughs> so all the comments that you say and all the support that we have received and I think about the future and the future is here. So we are in, we are on the right path to success. So thank you.
Uh, well, thank you so much. And of course, we think about you and your department every day because this conversion is just going to be such a huge, huge undertaking for the school system. And we really appreciate your enthusiasm, enthusiasm and leadership. So thank you. Yes, and thank you too. And y'all have a great day. All right, you too. All right. So I guess thank you all so much. See you next time. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good evening.